it's Courtney with Leviathan Snakes, and today we're showing you how we took a pre-built bare bones shed and turned it into a building that is habitable and comfortable for all of our animals and roomy enough for us to have and continue to grow into. And it looks really freaking cool. So the whole point of this video is gonna be going from like bare ground to nothing else there, all the way up till this place. So right now, it's not the bare bones I was talking about. We've already done a lot of work and you're gonna see what work we put into it throughout this video. We are getting a little late of a start. So the beginning of the video will probably just be us talking about what we did and maybe some pictures or little videos that we took along the way. But right now we are three fourths of the way done. So I want to give a little update, show off what we're doing. And uh, I hope this is helpful to someone else who might be trying to do the same thing. Y'all enjoy. One thing I want to say before we really get into it, like every single step of the way, we always ran into an issue. Like it doesn't matter like what the issue was. There might've been small, might've been big. It doesn't matter. We were not professionals. We're not saying we're professionals. You probably shouldn't want to take our advice on this, but you might want to hear it. So that way you can hear all of the different mistakes that we made or like challenges that we had. So that way maybe it goes easier for you. When we decided that we were going to build the shed, we had thought about your uh, we had thought about possibly looking for a new house, uh, but in case anybody doesn't know, it's a really bad time to try to find a new house. Um, and the thing about it is <clears throat> we couldn't get anything in like an HOA neighborhood because we've got all the animals. We're trying to run a business out of our home. Um, and that is the best place to find um, houses at the moment. So we would need something kind of away from like a neighborhood and right now our house is in such a perfect spot that every time we found a house that we liked it was so much farther away from conveniences like right now we can walk to downtown we are five minutes from like the grocery store five minutes from the supermarket five minutes from the hospital <laughs> um, so moving always felt like a downgrade. Every house that we found, even if it was bigger than the one that we're currently living in, it always felt like a downgrade. So what we decided was if we had one more bedroom, or we had one more room in the house or a basement or a finished attic or something like that, we wouldn't need to move. When we found out we were having the baby and we really needed to move the snakes into a new room in the house, um, we did decide to build an outbuilding, like a finished building with temperature control, um, good solid seals, and uh, like it doesn't have running water, but electricity for us to use. When the like house hunt kind of fell through, we decided that we were going to refinance our current house. And with the extra money beyond the refinance, that, that's what we would use to build a garage that would have a section for a shop. So that way we could like have all of the snakes out in the garage, have a little bit more room to grow and we'd get our extra bedroom back. So when we started getting quotes for it, we found out like from like a contractor to do everything that we wanted, it was going to be about $60,000. And that was outside of our budget. That was too much that we were willing to spend and it just wasn't feasible given like how, what we had in mind for it. So after that, we started looking into pre-manufactured sheds essentially. So this building is actually a 12 by 20 foot shed that we have completely finished the inside. So on the outside, it looks like a shed. On the inside, it is like legit nicer than all, some of the apartments I've lived in. We then started looking at sheds and like literally the day before our um, wedding, Stephen went out and bought a shed. Like he, like he didn't have other things to do, but he calls me. Or no, I call him, I was like, hey, so-and-so, I picked so-and-so up from the airport. I got the cookies, I got the cake, I did this. Where are you? He's like, I'm checking out sheds. Anyway, must be nice. 
we got a hold of our friend Troy at Balls and Strikes who had done something very, very similar. So he had gotten a 12 by 30 foot building and kind of made that his own facility. And it was super nice, perfect for all of the animals that he had and that he was a much like larger scale than what we are looking at. So we knew we didn't have to go quite that big. So there was a couple pieces of, ad of advice that he gave us when he was doing it. And the very first one, was that when he did his building, he had it put on cinder blocks at first and that we live in South Carolina and the ground here is not super strong. It's like sandy and stuff, so it settles. And with his building, he noticed that it was starting to settle and the floor was warping and things like that. So he was like, whatever you do, go with a slab, do a slab. So that was one thing that we did. And that was like our very, very first thing that we had trouble finding. So we got a hold of the place that we were gonna buy the shed from, and then they recommended, like, they're a concrete contractor that wasn't necessarily affiliated with them, but like they'd worked with in the past. So we get a hold of this concrete concrete contractor, and it would we'd call him, he'd answer, he'd be like, oh yeah, I'll get you a quote, give me until the end of the day because I'm working a job right now. It's like, oh great. So this happened for about two or three weeks of like this where he would never actually get us the quote and he'd like apologize. And eventually he gave us a quote. And when he gave us the quote, it was like within the range that we were looking at. We're like, yeah, that's perfect. And literally like the next day he came out and it was done. The slab was like poured, it was awesome. So he bought the shed and it was bare bones. We did get it pre-wired. We didn't do that right away, um, but we ended up talking to an electrician Again, we asked an electrician how much it would be to run a line and wire three outlets and a light, and that was gonna be $8,000. Um, it's $500 to get your shed pre-wired. And we were like, hey, is it too late to like get it pre-wired? And he, the guy was awesome. He's like, no, not at all. I can put in a note to it or for it. It's perfectly fine. You'll just pay the difference. And it was like $500 to get it pre-wired. So we get it pre-wired, gets its own breaker panel. Everything's gonna be like perfect for it. But when it comes time for the building to come in, so it was about an eight week lead time, this is like end of October, ish, around in there, maybe like a little bit earlier or beginning of October. And they get the building in and it was like raining, raining for like a week straight. And like, we can't come out because we can't like risk our like truck getting stuck. We don't want to tear up your yard as you're, we're like putting it in. It's like, oh, I completely understand. Finally, it stops raining and they are scheduled to come out. That morning, they call me and they're like, hey, I am super, super sorry. I actually just went out and opened it up and they didn't see the note to get it pre-wired, so it's not pre-wired. Um, I've already put it in, they're like rush ordering it to like get you a new one, but I am super sorry, we'll get this fixed. So it was about maybe another three or four weeks of another delay before they actually got the building that was pre-wired, got it delivered, got it installed. At that point, everything was perfect. It was awesome. Right away, Steven went ahead and put up insulation, but it kind of sat like that with just the insulation up for a couple weeks, I wanna say. We get insulation up on the walls, which wasn't one, was probably one of the easier stages of it. So we used, I think it was R15 or R13, so it's South Carolina. We don't necessarily have like that extreme of temperatures. And we were planning on getting this mini split that it's a Mitsubishi. We, it was directly recommended from Troy. Awesome, we're super happy with it. But so we didn't need like super crazy stuff because we're not dealing with like Illinois winters, which is where I grew up. So at first I was like, we need the best insulation. We need like amazing. We need to go for like R9000. And when we go to find like the most R value to like have the like biggest insulation, I wasn't quite paying attention to it. I knew you weren't supposed to compress insulation. Again, I'm not handy. That's not like something to take back. This is like the most handy project I've ever done. And Courtney's way better at this stuff than I am. So I'm like, oh yeah, here's the one that we need because it's gonna be the best inst insulation and it's gonna keep the climate controlled like better than anything else. So. Courtney's like, we shouldn't do this because it's like 12 inches thick and the walls are not 12 inches thick between where the drywall is gonna be and the like rafters. They're like four inches thick. And she was 100% right and I was just stupid. We did have an electrician wire the shed, like add the switch to, is the switch? Sure. The circuit, sorry, to the um, breaker outside and run the line for us. Um, we, we dug the trench, but they did all the actual wiring. Um, well, I didn't dig the trench, Steven dug the trench. Steven and our friend Sean dug the trench. 
Our next big thing was getting the electricity and the HVAC hooked up. And huge shout out to our friends, Will and Jennifer, as well as their coworker, Mike, awesome people. Will and Jennifer are with, uh, they are the Nake Breeders, as well as Logger Home Geckos. Amazing people, gonna link their stuff down below. But they helped us out because again, we were going off of that original electrician who had quoted us like eight grand for to like do all the electricity, hook it up to that house, install the mini split, everything like this. And that was just way too much. So they are like, we can help you out for way less than that. Like we, we got you, they, they work in construction. So they had us dig the trench and um, Mike showed us how to like hook it up. So he hooks it up to the house, installs like an extra breaker at the house. He hooks it up to the breaker panel out here. Everything's great. That's like one of the smoothest things that we had. And Mike had been very upfront with us. He's like, look, I'm, I'm an electrician. I'm not, I don't, I haven't, I'm not an HVAC guy. Like I can get it, but like, just so you're aware, it might not be professional, but I can get it done. So we get it all done. We get the HVAC installed. It took actually a little bit because there was like, we had the wiring just a little bit wrong. So it was only getting like 120, watts, volts, I don't, again, I'm not handy, I'm not an electrician, but it needed like 240 or 220 or something like that. So once that got fixed, it was good. Um, so the HVAC is going, all the insulation in, we, is in, we have power, it's doing awesome. We're super, super excited. And as we're starting to do drywall, so we're hanging drywall, Courtney's family comes over, her sister Cara and her dad. I couldn't help with drywall hanging, so we needed someone who could come out for a couple, like several hours, hold it up, screw it in, who knew what they were doing, because it's not something either of us had ever done before. And we found a day that worked for my, my dad and my sister, and they threw up all four wall, or all three, I guess, walls that first day and started on the ceiling. And they came out the next day and got like n down to the last couple um, pieces for the ceiling we had two pieces um, in the back here and then the little eaves, the little triangular bits. Those were the only things that they didn't finish in those first two days. We're getting this drywall and we're knocking it out and we had the HVAC off because it was hot in here while we were working and stuff. So when we eventually get to the point where we turn the HVAC on to test it, we realize that all of the refrigerant that had been in it, because it was a pre-charged unit, had like slowly leaked out over the couple weeks that we were working and we hadn't like actually like sealed it right. So we ended up calling out an HVAC tech. They came out and they redid it just enough so that way it was like straight like professional grade installation. Awesome people, really, really liked them and they recharged it. They were great, really, really liked them. We go through and we are, by we, I mean Courtney, is doing all of the mudding and sanding and making sure that all of the drywall actually like looks good. So I just finished sanding. We have put on all of our mud down. We've sanded everything. We've put more mud on, we've sanded again. We've put more mud on and we've sanded again. So we have completely finished. What I'm gonna do right now is take this like very damp sponge and kind of wipe the walls down. There's a lot of dust. If you can't tell, it's all over. You can see where my mask was. <laughs> and I got all, all four walls mudded and then the next day sanded. And then I mudded another layer and sanded that layer before my sister was able to come out again and they were able to get that last bit of drywall in. I think we have the video of Stephen putting in the last piece of drywall. Cut to one more screw, unless I miss. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we have one screw left. Okay. Um, we did it! While we were hanging the drywall, um, we were doing like the second to last piece. It's actually like right up there. I know you can't see it in the video. And we're drilling it in, we're drilling it in, and we know that there's a wire that's running down the stud. And as we're drilling it, there's a sharp, like just jolt, not like a spark that we saw, but just like a pop, all the lights go off. And we're like, shit. Thanks to Will and Mike, I could do this on my own because they literally taught me how to do it, which I don't recommend. I'm not an electrician and all that stuff, but simple wiring is really simple. And they pretty much explained, you got like your hot wire, that's usually red or black. You got a neutral, that's white. And you have a ground that's going to be green or just straight copper. And you just connect them all together and make sure it's good and put on the little wire nuts on it. 
We also ended up getting the HVAC reinstalled in the middle of that. So we did have to um, take a little bit of drywall out and put it back in. Um, so all the mudding, sanding, and drywall installation took two weeks, two weeks total, three weeks maybe. Yeah, three weeks from when we started to when we started painting. I really liked the idea of purple walls and a black ceiling to kind of look like night sky since we've got the galaxy vibe going on. Um, but we ended up just doing the one back wall black and the rest of it purple because I didn't want, and the doors are um, black as well. I, did, uh, I think Steven was smart because if the ceiling had been black, it would have been a lot darker in here and there's no windows or anything. So we're all relying on the light. And I do think that the back wall being black looks a lot better. And it looks good for pictures and it looks good for videos. It's got this little purple light bouncing off of it. It looks really good. So I'm really glad we did the black wall. I wanted to use my newfound like electrician little tidbit of knowledge and install a new light. So we get these shop lights and we get them installed while we were like working. And at first Courtney was like, no, it's not necessary. There was like one, literally one tiny little light bulb that did an amazing job of illuminating it, but it cast some weird shadows and it didn't really give good lighting on it. So we get these two shop lights installed and as we like are going to put in like the tubes for it, I like set them in and I've never really done this before. So I like set them in, kind of turn, turn them a little bit and we get everything set up and we go flip it on, both, uh, both lights come on. I'm like, yes, finally something that went right, which I was just straight wrong at, but at least it wasn't a huge problem. So I'm like, yes, this works. So we go up to put the covers back on the lights, like the diffusers. And as it touches it, the light goes off. And I'm like, oh no, did I like wire it wrong? Like what, what happened? So we go take off the, uh, the cover and we like undo all the like stuff to see the wire and all the wires are fine. They're like safely tucked away in like their casing. They're in the wire nuts. Everything's like perfect. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. So I go to the other light and as we touch the other light, again, same thing, just goes off. I'm like, what is up? So I'm trying to take off the cover on this one. As I'm trying to take off the cover, it rips one of the drywall screws because I had only put in two because I was an idiot and one of the sides rips off the wall. So I'm up on a ladder trying to like balance a drill and a diffuser and the light that's only connected by one side and it's, it was just a mess. So Courtney ended up having to climb up the other ladder, even though she was eight months pregnant, in order to like help hold it. Eventually we get it all like straightened out and we realize that there's not two spots for screws. There's like nine million. And I was just an idiot and didn't see them all. So we get it all securely screwed in. And as we are taking out the lights, and like putting them back in, I realized that I didn't rotate them far. I essentially, like if you're thinking of like a screw in light bulb, like set the light bulb in there, did that much of a turn. And I was like, that's probably good. And it was just enough to turn on. But if I actually like turned them more, they clicked and locked into place. And that was the issue with the lights. But now they're up, they're on. Awesome, we're super, super excited about those. So this was our first time painting over primer. It is nice. Y'all use primer. It goes on so good. The paint does afterwards. That's the easiest paint job ever for us. Um, but yeah, so we got the ceilings painted white, walls painted purple, a couple places painted black. And then once all that painted paint had dried, we had to install the floors. We originally wanted like a gray color floor um, that Steven really likes that gray color because you know, we've got the gray racks and all that and we didn't want too much you know purple black brown we, we wanted to try to mute that floor a little bit um, but Home Depot again we we go to Home Depot for everything Home Depot locally did not have the flooring we wanted <clears throat> um, in the rollout vinyl they only had it in the planks and it was recommended to us not to get the plank flooring one because the rollout vinyl is a lot easier to install it is a shed and to these big heavy racks, when you roll them on the plank vinyl, it will separate them a little bit and it'll like get them out of place. So it was recommended to us to do the rollout vinyl and they didn't have the one we wanted locally. We talked about going to Lowe's, but one, Lowe's sucks. 
they didn't even come over to like we waited like we tried to call people over we tried to ask for help they never even came over to us it and home depot rents trucks so like neither we don't own a pickup truck um so every time we bought the drywall or the vinyl or the floorboards we needed to rent their flatbed truck um which is like 19 dollars for an hour and a half and we live 10 minutes from home depot so we we would have had to rent the truck and go to Lowe's, <laughs> rent the truck from Home Depot, go to Lowe's, get the stuff, go to the house, go back to Lowe's, Home Depot to drop it off. Um, so we knew we wanted to buy from Home Depot and we wanted to buy from this one locally because again, if we went all the way to Augusta, it wouldn't be a 10 minute drive in a rental truck. So with all that, we decided to just purchase different floors and I really like how they turned out. They look so cool and we were, the guy was awesome, super, super helpful. So we end up getting the roll, we come back here and we are, roll it all out, let it like sit for a day so that way it like kind of has a chance to expand or contract and all of this stuff. And when we go to cut it the next day, so as we're cutting it, we I like watch so many YouTube videos and it's like cut five times like just a little bit each time so that way you aren't cutting too much and like cutting out a chunk that's actually going to be visible and i'm like all right courtney cara this is what we got to do we got to it's better to cut five times than short than cut one time too long and as we're going and doing it they do like an amazing job and i'm the one who cuts one time too long so there's like this little like thing right near the baseboard that we end up having to like cut out from scrap scrap parts of the vinyl and end up like putting it down. And it looks great, you can't even tell now, but yeah, I was the person who messed up and I was like telling them like, hey, we gotta be careful here. And then with the floorboards, the baseboards, sorry, uh, Steven nailed them in with picture hanging nails. He got into my picture hanging kit and he took the nails out of there and he hammered them in. Cause we don't have a nail gun. And we were gonna use liquid nails. Do you know how hard it is to keep a baseboard pressed up against the wall long enough for liquid nail to dry? Stupid. Use a hammer and a um, picture hanging kit. <laughs> we get everything all set up out here. We're super, super, super excited. We start moving out animals, and actually, this was probably the smoothest, one of the smoothest things. We didn't have any major mess ups. There was no escapees. There was no no problems at all. And honestly, these are the ARS um, hybrid racks. So we got this one. We got our hatching rack, and then we have our DIYs. They were super easy to move. Like, because once you build them once. You just pop them out and you take out each layer and it's not hard at all. We did it all with our hands, didn't really need any tools. And it gave us the ability for our hatchling rack. So our hatchling rack used to like stick on some of the layers because I didn't have it quite, quite aligned on the rails. We were able to fix those while we were taking it apart. Now it's like amazing, awesome. The first thing we moved out was the rodents. We bought a new shelving unit for them. Um, and we moved them out here first. And then we moved out our DIY racks. We have a couple of snakes in our DIY right now because we don't have room in the ARS for them. We've ordered a 5540 uh, that, you know, it's got a lead time. I think it's coming in uh, February, early February or late January. So once we get that ARS out here, we will be taking those DIY racks out. They're good to have, but believe it or not, we built this huge building. We, we don't really have room for random racks in here because these ARS racks are really big. Um, so we'll be putting the 5540 out here next and we will have a lot of open space after that. Uh, but but um, I'm sure all the holdbacks we are hoping to get this season and next season will do more to fill that up than we realize. We've got a good little bit of room left. We were able to put up things that we didn't have in um, the bedroom that we'd have everything in. So we have like a big long, sorry, big long card table in here now. We had just been using the hatchling rack. We only have a couple layers of a hatchling rack with plywood on, or not plywood, but a wood on top to use as a standing desk. Now we have like a low sitting desk that we can keep stuff on. We have that new rat rack and we'll be able to put a, uh, like a big standing incubator in here as well. Um, so we do have a lot more room, but it's crazy how fast you start to fill it up. I mean, we could take out the big old table, but it's nice to have it in here right now. 
overall, we are so freaking stoked about this place. And again, I know that it's small. It's not like a huge, crazy facility, but it is our very first one that we've built. And even though it was a prefabbed shed, we are so proud and so happy. And we can't thank like everybody that helped us out with this, whether it's Will and Jennifer, if it's Mike, Troy from Balls and Strikes for his advice, Courtney's family, like it was just an awesome, awesome experience. And we are super happy that it's done because we were straight exhausted because we were going nonstop once the building was here, but we are so proud of it. And we cannot wait to see all of the babies, the snakes, all of that stuff that are produced here for the years to come. Another thing about the shed, we've had the rodents in the room with the snakes for a while, but I think with there not being like windows in here, um, the snakes are smelling the rodents and maybe even hearing the rodents a lot more because we've already seen an increased feeding response from at least one of our animals. Uh, our Pastave Het Clown Girl, today I put our clown boy in with her. They've walked three times already and she ate Sunday night. So she ate a couple nights ago. Um, I put him in with her, closed the tub, didn't, I mean, I didn't go anywhere. I was right here and I heard a strike like as if I had just put an ASF or a rat in with her. I opened it up. She had struck and wrapped him as if he was a rat. And I've never heard of that happening. It was crazy. I'm pretty, she's building follicles. So she's got a stronger feeding response right now, but I've never heard of aggression like that. Um, so I, I had to pull them out and put her on the floor to get her to let go of him. I, I Googled it. I've asked other breeders if they've ever seen a female strike a male like that. And nobody says that they've heard of that happening with a, an adult female and an adult male. And they are, she is confirmed female. He is confirmed male. They've, they've locked <laughs> the two of them. So if you've ever heard anything about that and you have any suggestions of how to avoid that in the future, we gave her an extra meal tonight I don't know how comfortable I am putting him back in with her right now though. So let me know what you think about that. I know it's unrelated to the video, but it is pretty wild that it happened. So if you guys liked the video, please don't forget to subscribe. Please don't forget to leave a like and a comment below. And if you guys are building your own facility, if you've built your facility, anything like that, and you guys want to talk, definitely send us a comment or leave a comment below. Go to Instagram. We are at Leviathan period snakes and send us a DM. We'd love to talk. It was super fun. We'll let you know anything else if you want to talk about anything more in any anything in more depth. So we hope you're having a wonderful day and we will see you next week.